Okay, so uh, my name is Ishan and uh, I'm working as a system administrator in PDC High Performance Computing Center. So uh, we'll discuss about uh, how we enabled e-science users into clouds using OpenAVR. So this is not a, a product showcase and I'm not affiliated with OpenAVR. If you, if you if some of the developer here, they can you can verify with them. So I'm not for OpenAVR. So uh, there is not a, this is not a product showcase. So what, how we use it? There are various ways you can use different platforms. So and and you can you can argue about it how we are actually using it. So uh, today agenda is that who are the e-science users and some of the projects we work on and challenges we face and and in the last we will talk about federating different cloud centers uh, with EGI federated cloud task force and and definitely QA. PDC uh, is a high performance computing center situated at KDH. So basically, we are we are hosting uh, supercomputers like Crave on the on the left side, my right side, and your left side. And we have other high performance computing centers. So the reason I'm, I told you about this about that the users we are, which we are serving is is basically from HPC mindset. And who are the science users? Basically, initially we focused on, on biocommunications and and they are currently learning on HPC machines. And that was an issue. <laughs> because uh, they think in, in HPC style that where they get big machine for continuous number of hours, but they want it in last way. Uh, but that was a challenge for us to change this mindset. But not all some of them, some of the users need perceived speaks like elasticity. And what we realize that in a long tail, if you if you see this picture of the long tail, in the end, uh, in the start you have the big users who are using HPC, and the and the long users who are not using HPC but they need these bursty peaks. So they are, the set of the users are different. Some of the users they need HPC machines for their for their scientific problems. And right now, uh, cloud is not in the good shape to to post, to post those HPC users giving them thousands of cores for the next like 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So this is not cloud work. So we had we had so many uh, talks and debates about this, that who are the cloud using folks, and since they are coming from HPC background, they have this idea that they can get peaks even maintaining the number of thousands of cores. So cloud is not for that one. Cloud is for these long chain users who have small sets of problems, but they want peaks for a couple of hours, or two hours, three hours, but they go like this. If you see, if you see the Amazon slides, you see this uh, elastic fashion when you come up and down like this style. And this was a core, that was a core proposition, core, core proposition for us. So we started with a new project in, in 2009. At that time, uh, cloud was just uh, booming up, middle years, and we found Ecolactis. And at that time, it was 2.0. So we started working on that, and we hosted Ecolactis environment, and then uh, form of federated with another center. Later on, uh, there was uh, this project finished uh, last year, my 2012 uh, Venus C project, where we collaborated with several centers across Europe. And there we hosted Open Nebula. We moved from Eucalyptus to Open Nebula. And with CDMI, and CDMI developed by Ian Johnson, I found him sitting there uh, accidentally. <laughs> so, yeah, so he developed CDMI interface with, for us, and we hosted, we run that CDMI interface. On a different path. OVF path is developed, was developed by ENG.IT, Italian group, and, and they were running OpenAvila, we were running OpenAvila, and another part of our BSC, Barcelona Supercomputing Center, they were, they were running uh, another solution. So we federated, combined this, product, combined this in a way that a user can submit job to any of the centers. This project ended last uh, year, and Snake Cloud, Compute, Snake Cloud project is, is basically uh, a Swedish project. Uh, this is currently running. We started first with public cloud. Why? Because we want to actually, I mean, in a, in a plain word, we want users to become addicted with cloud. And at that time, private compu private cloud computing, I mean, it's not, was not so mature, honestly speaking. So they need a nice interface point and click, all this elasticity built in, all this storage built in, and basically scientists are the scientists, they don't treat them as a sysadmin or bash experts. So they need, 
then in a nice interface with elasticity and all these bells and whistles. And basically, we want them to feel comfortable with the cloud. And at that time, public cloud was the only one. So we started with Amazon, we gave a few workshops, we built images for them so that they can be addicted to the cloud, so uh, to changing their minds. Uh, and we gave workshops in, in Oslo, in Bayern, uh, and Sweden, and Uppsala, and uh, in other places, so just to uh, familiarize them with, with the cloud there. And later on, since we already had a private cloud, we wanted to move them from the public cloud because uh, of the speed. And if you write down one of the reasons why the one of the problems which we are facing that when we talk about the scientific user, the biggest part is the, is the data. So it's three terabyte, five terabyte of files. So if you transfer that to S3, and right now in Europe, European region, basically there are two two problems. And, and this is the this is not hypothetic problem, this is a really big problem. One is the privacy. Swedish researcher and the East bioinformaticians, um, there is a, they, there is a, they call it uh, bioinformaticians rather share the brushes than their data. So they want, they, they rather share the toothbrushes than their data. So they don't want to share data with anyone, especially the results. So, and they don't want to leave the data from the Swedish border. And, and hosting it in Amazon, that was an issue. And even, I mean, uh, if they solve some of the privacy issue, then the uploading and downloading of the data is very, is very cumbersome because of the speed. So we face this issue, and so we, we plan to move uh, to move back this, those users with their fancy uh, Amazon Cloud Management Console to back to the private cloud with few challenges. And these are the two challenges. Basically, what we face is I am myself a sys administrator, so I I, uh, I face this issue. One of the non, uh, one part, one kind is non-technical issue, and you will see later as well changing hearts and minds. And another is a technical issue, with rather easier. What are the non-technical issue? Whenever you talk about cloud, there suddenly come up uh, the, the the notion of security you know, that is not secure. So my background is is I started working at PDC from grid side, grid computing, and I have a master's degree uh, uh, from KTH as well. So and so basically coming from the grid side, uh, I, I faced this issue and several when we were deploying the cloud and both from the user side and both from the from other people's, we faced this whenever we talk about cloud they say okay, it's not secure, but why you are doing that? And like I told you before that the users they were living in HPC world. So they were thinking cloud as an HPC style. And because it is really hard to digest elasticity, for them to tell them that, okay, you, you can define the parameters, when to launch more instances and cut down instances, it's very hard to tell them. Uh, it's hard to tell them to, and then to think in this way. So we face an issue that when, when one of the user run a big instance on Amazon, and even they keep running into education, they forgot to terminate. Because they were they were not tuned in an elastic to use the instances in an elastic fashion. They were thinking that they just got the instance, and they, they configure it and then they keep running it for even for the on the vacations. And and on demand and self-provisioning, these are the also the problems, non-technical problems. And the last one is very funny because even the even if you, when you host a private cloud, it has to live with uh, other 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 people's. So so it has to live with other infrastructure, and then you get with other sysadmins. So usually sysadmins are conservative, and and when you talk about cloud, they say, "What do you mean about that?" And then it's suspicious. So. Uh, so to say, because but I know you are you people not like that. If you are sysadmins, otherwise you are in the wrong group, the wrong wrong room here. So uh, so there will face the problem. So you have to align your private cloud with other infrastructure groups. And this was the known technical issue. There is no technical solution for that, except that you you, you convince them or come from top. Okay. So and this one also very funny that. Some say some sys admin thinking was thinking that when you give the power to the user, the user not uh, they are not coming back to you. So for example, let's take a use case when a user wants uh, virtual machine 
Before the cloud, they have, they have to ask this admin, please create a virtual machine for me. And since this admin is always busy, so he said, okay, I will do this, and then it takes time, maybe hours, maybe days, or maybe week. Imagine if the user say, I need five virtual machines, and they get it after one week, and they say, okay, I need it only for one hour. And after next day, they say, I need 10 more, but I need those 10 machines only for two hours. I mean, he said, beside all this uh, automatic installation of VMs, it takes time for them to get VMs. And when they see this, that when you enable cloud to the user, you give this self-provisioning to the users, and they were afraid that there will be more jobless admins. I took this picture because uh, on this one of the driver, he's managing all things to himself, and other is a pilot. Both are the same role. But the pilot is more elastic, more automatic things. They are different styles. So it's not about jobless thing. So you have to tune yourself, you have to choose yourself what kind of styles you want to prepare. You want either to control everything so that users come back and forth to you so you feel comfortable and see, feel secure about your position. Or you want to focus on more strategic issues, more big issues, and leave the user aside so, so that they can be flexible in this way. Not a technical issue. When we when when we when we post the e-science users, first thing comes up about the network latency. So in network latency, uh, we solve it by combining with increment and then multiple analyses. So and there is like 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 I said before, there can be various ways to solve this issue. This is the way we solve it, and there can be and this can be extended or improved later. So. We have separate uh, network cards for application data and separate network card for controller. The storage thing we, we solve it with different image for story on, on different thread. And, and for application data, we supply a DBS style kind of uh, storage solution with only separate thread solution. And for combining and for uh, others, we also have the CDMI. Public APIs, uh, since it is uh, now the IV4, V4 APIs is like commodities, <coughs> not so many. So we limit the users to, if they, if they form cluster, so we ask them to only have one public API on their master. And then rest of the 2025 nodes as a slave should not get public IPs. But this is the one of the issues that uh, uh, we cannot solve. Uh, it's not easy to solve because we don't have public IPs. But users always come up more. And although this, we have the notion of infinite in the cloud with, with italics and with inverted commas, but basically down the iron racks is limited to this physical boundary. So it cannot either you, you get more hardware or either you go back, you go hybrid. So you can attach. Uh, uh, at private cloud, I think any of them, open Nebula, open OpenStack, or you could this, to EC2 interfaces. But their user has to think about that. Because when they have to do this proper risk management, that what they want to run on their on the private cloud, in the storage border, or in the in a country border, or, or what they want to post outside, they have to do this risk analysis in cell work combined, combined with cloud management, who's providing. And the sharing of images, and, but be careful here because uh, we face this issue when users share the image but they forgot to, uh, to clean the, uh, this etc SSH authorized keys uh, file. So they, it's got bigger and bigger, but that wasn't it. There, there was not an issue. But those people, those public keys are there, when this VM image launched on another, by another user, if it is not properly cleaned, those users can, uh, can log in to those machines. So using the hooking mechanism of Open Nebula, you can clean up, uh, before the shutdown, you can clean up the, the image. This is how we do it. And when we think of, when we, when we're talking about the users, we say, okay, what are they, how they use it? So Sunstone, we configured it uh, this year. And previously, most of the users were using uh, command line interface of Open Nebula. It was very easy, but we configured it. Uh, but we give them this. Uh, uh, we, we download it and change the command line interfaces so, so that user don't get uh, the full command line interface. 
just only the one which we need. And later, some of the users, if you talk about the e-science user, they already have their applications. Some of them, some of the applications are open source. Some of the e-science users hired a master student to code his a new application. And they are now they are uh, they are coding the application in some ID. So they want an SDK style uh, access to to cloud. And this problem which we see. Agile developer versus static administrator. So on, on that side, whenever you talk, uh, let's take a case that uh, you are a software developer, and from the from your code you want to uh, you want to have you want to run the, your you want to run your code on the cloud, and then run uh, you develop your code, but then you go outside of your IDE or uh, say to system administrator to launch more VMs. But even if it is a cloud, you have to go outside of your IDE and go to Sunstone or use Command Bash style to launch VMs. We solved it, uh, and that's the bottom line. We solved it uh, using SDK, where now uh, users can launch the virtual machines instances right from their own code. So they don't have to leave IDE where they are programming. So this is, uh, we use the Java one, and then there's some of the examples. Uh, Spark. We extended the Spark here. The Spark is a MapReduce kind of, and Hadoop, and Spark, I mean Spark runs on, on memory kind of thing. So basically, in this way, they have no dependency on even on cloud admin, and they don't, they don't have to leave because this code uh, uh, last year, last from Las Vegas, CTO of Amazon, they say this. Uh, whenever we talk about this, is another funny thing is that whenever we talk about cloud to others. People they say okay, cloud is not just just not only. I mean, it's only virtual management system. It's just a bunch of virtual machines running here and there. It's just a VM management system. Understand? So they think that the cloud is just only VM management service. So uh, CTO of uh, Amazon he said that things computer and storage as an object. You create, you destroy, you operate as whenever you want and how and however you like. So using the SDK, we were able to, we were able to get it, this uh, this idea. One more technical issue is security. Uh, we managed to get it through VLANs, through bridge firewalls, and the network auditing tools. We be forced to use the traditional ones. And for example, and this last one is a question that uh, what if the, one of the legitimate user install a legal software? A Tomcat, for example, and configured it wrongly, so that its manager panel is has default password, and and any other hacker who has access to the manager panel deployed a botnet or any bomb. How to stop that one? Since VM introspection or VM auditing is limited technically, plus also by privacy rules, it is it's very hard to you only you can only manage it through through a black box. Or either you have a firewall outside, you just monitor the traffic, but you are managing on the network level. It's very hard to 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 see the drawing processing and what the user installed and all the volunteering and everything things uh, in, in the VM. So this is the real problem which we faced. And we got blocked by our KTH IIT because one of the legal users, legitimate users, did this. And and he was not aware of that. Uh, and it was uh, Configure bomb versus deployed. And anyhow, so this was the issue uh, which is still in question. There can be various solutions for that one. If you have one, please convey. It's federation now. So uh, when we talk about federation, uh, we're actually part of EGI Cloud Federation Task Force. EGI is a, is a, is a successor of ETE, Enable Threat Reporting Science, and many of you already know that. You can read more about that in uh, Fred Cloud Task Force. Uh, the task force has a duty is is is, a, is actually federating different centers across the world. So when you talk about federation, these are the areas. Uh, VM management. We able to get the federation of VM management through using OCCI interface. And every centers, I, I look at list here, they were running different Middlewares, cloud middlewares. I'm using the technology of grid that cloud middlewares. 
Some of them running open nebula, some of them running open stacks, some, some of them running W nodes, and you will get a list here. And but they, they all of them provided OCCI interface in front of them, in front of their middle list. So OCCI is part of our federation when we talk about VM. Data management uh, federation, we got it through CDN proxy. Uh, information system, to get the information, we use the same old grid old glue to schema with using LDAP server. Accounting, again, this is cloud usage record, uh, but basically they were, it was using, it is using the same use record in, in, uh, in, from grid world. Uh, Monitoring, we did it with values with some of the cloud probes. If the VM is able to deploy, and there are some tests. And federated AI, this is a very, uh, whenever you talk about the fed uh, federation, one of the biggest issues is that how you federate users. Uh, since uh, this group is, is also from the grid side, so we were thinking in a grid, because we were trying to reuse everything we spent time and money on grid. So we get it uh, federation by H.259 because H.259 is heavily used in grid world and support a virtual and organization. So we built a video uh, to get this federation thing. Uh, to share the images so, so that when a user mounts a VM on any of the resource provider, you will see the list next slide, how, where to get this list of the image. So we use status lab marketplace. I noticed that Open Nebula also launched one of the marketplace solutions, so, but we were using Statics Lab uh, in marketplace software to, to, sh uh, to share the image. So, federation part, this is just a diagram. Uh, OCCI, CDMI, Blue Schema, UR, and I-0509. So these are the centers. Uh, 16 individuals and 23 institutions, and more are coming up, more are trying. And we have KTH, we have SARA, we have uh, SDFC UK, we have uh, GRNet, INFN, and several other CypherNet. And they were running, seven of them running open Nebula. This slide actually is from uh, September. So there is now more uh, resource provider joining up. So seven of them were running open Nebula. Three of them running status lab, which is, which is open Nebula, but it's in more, more tweaks. Three of them running OpenStack, one OpenX and one WNOS. So in total we have 15 resource providers, seven technology providers, five user communities. User communities are the ones who are actually testing that. So it's a use cases we were running. So they were all, uh, no matter if, if you are running OpenNebula or Status Lab, as long as you provide OCCI interface in front of that, I mean, you can, it's, uh, you can federate with it. These are the components for AI using Azure 509. Uh, for VM management, we using OCCI 1.1, and it's called, uh, currently we are using Rocky, it's Ruby based OCCI implementation developed by GWDG, Florian. Uh, VM sharing by marketplace and information sharing by Bluetooth, uh, that, and the resource providers in between. And each resource provider has to run this, all this. He has to run information system, data management, accounting, monitoring, not monitoring. He has to accept monitoring props into his resource provider. And according to accounting records will be pushed to central accounting server. So this is this is the uh, and the client can access using the same client without changing anything as long as access he has access to all the resource providers through this centralized federated authentication service. So he can access and launch virtual machine uh, to any of the any of the resource provider. So he can launch. Uh, virtual machines into any of the 15 resource providers without changing anything if he has access to these low resource providers. This way we federated uh, across Europe with different centers. This was the, uh, another, this was the same thing but different uh, layout. So, and these are the issues which we are facing now. And these are uh, not solved yet. Users they want uh, because since we already addicted them to Amazon, so they first go to Amazon and then see whenever they see a new service, they come back to us. They say, okay, this is a nice service. Can we have that? For example, this some simple workflow kind of service is very uh, appealing for them. We needed a private cloud, and I could not get it uh, using OpenAgora yet. If you have any solution, please tell me. There was one cloud here or something, but that project is, 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 is like stopped. So I don't know what to use there, honestly speaking. And really, 
second is orchestration service. Uh, really, the, the, the user wants a cloud watch kind of thing of Amazon in, of, in private cloud. They want to define the parameters based on RAM, based on process, based on time. So, for example, they, can, they should specify that in the morning between 9 and the evening between 9 to 5, they need these number of instances, but when they go back home, this, this instance should be taken back. This is not, we really haven't implemented that in our cloud because I could not find solution to do that. A really good orchestration service for private cloud. And the third one is auditing VM from inside. Because of this problem which we face, and, and there can be other problems where we need to audit or introspect the VM, running VM, either with the number of process it is consuming, I mean, we, we need to audit the VM. But the question is that should we do this? Because there are, each country has their own privacy regulation, and the student is very strict about that. Uh, this is that uh, we cannot do this in Sweden uh, legally. So, and they also need a bare metal, they want to move, just giving them virtual machines, they want to move from IAS to app style to get an application running. Some of the users comes up and they say we want to configure Spark. And there we have to work with them. We have to prepare images for them. We have to prepare cluster for them, even in cloud, but they don't know how to do this. So they need a prepared applications like Galaxy, like MapReduce or Spark on, on the fly. So they need this kind of this, they want to move from infrastructure of the service, little bit up, not right on the service, or not software as a service, little bit in between that, I call it application as a service. So it's not a platform as a service, it's not a software as a service, it's like an application as a service. So it comes in between. So they want to little bit move up. Some of the users they know how to configure and install software on virtual machines. Some of the users they don't want, they don't know. So they need they need uh, bare metal install full application stack. And furthermore, when when we talk about these platform things, the platform security is even harder than infrastructure security because in platform security is very hard. For example, how do you how do you check that if a user Accessing a particular database, is he able to? Should he able to access this file system or not? Yes. That, 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 because in infrastructure service is very easy to get the list of processes. If it is listing on the port, you not run the end map. If there is running, if there is something port, strange ports are running, you can notify the users. But in platform the security, it's very hard to to have this artificial intelligence, or you should imply machine learning techniques here to so know that if this user is allowed to access this database or this table or at this time. So this is this is the problem. This platform security is even harder in our, in our point of view. So this is the last slide, I think so. So thank you very much and, and this is my email address. You can grab not grab me but you can contact me later on this talk or if you have any question you can send me an email, any question or any suggestion please. Thank you. 